I don't know, it's kind of funny, maybe a little tongue-in-cheek that they actually said re repair on this uh, mitral leaflet yeah, technology. I'm not exactly sure we're repairing uh, anything, but um, let's see. So I was asked to talk about Lampoon. You've obviously heard it in the earlier session and uh, here again by, uh, by Myra. Here are my disclosures. Uh, you've also heard a lot about LVOT obstruction and this is an emotionally enriching experience if it's happened to you, which is everything's great and then all of a sudden the gradient's high. And this is a few years ago when we didn't know what we were doing and it ultimately led to a death and and an understanding of the issue here with the anterior leaflet. And <clears throat> Gorov can tell you that surgeons resect the leaflets and preserve the cords. Uh, and when you look at what happened in this patient, this is all work by Didi Wang, and, and again, CT has been a lifesaver now for this procedure, but when we didn't know what we were doing, we were sizing them on diastole thinking, we need to know how big the valve needs to be because we worried about embolization, and what we didn't realize is a systole is a whole nother ball of wax, and so this patient clearly had no flow left when the valve went in. And um, uh, so obviously the permanent displacement of the anterior leaflet is an issue. But there is also, don't forget that there are other issues with the leaflet, the long anterior leaflet and the redundant anterior leaflet. Um, we've now, uh, we actually published three case vignettes of problems that occurred during TMVR that had nothing to do with LVOT obstruction. One of them, the leaflet was so prolapsed that it just flops in and obstructs and it actually blocks mechanical uh, action of the leaflet. One of them created some eddy currents and they wouldn't allow the leaflet to pressurize. And we've even seen late SAM just because the leaflet is not thick enough. And again, surgeons resect the leaflet and preserve the cords. And so that led to an idea over a beer with Vasilis Babalaris about could we mimic what the surgeons do with transcatheter techniques. The brilliance of uh, Jaffer Khan and Rob Letterman at the NIH said, well, let's use some of these transcatheter electrical surgical principles that we were already using for transcavalin. This animation shows you how we do it. It's retrograde, two six French JL4 catheters, one at the base of the A2 leaflet with it's what we call standard transcable technique. You can burn it through the base of the leaflet and then grab the wire and create a lasso. And then with, again, transcatheter electrosurgical principles, you can now electrify the side of this wire and pull and lacerate the leaflet. Interestingly, very well tolerated because this picture, although an animation I think is accurate, that it doesn't spread that much until you put the valve in. But after the valve goes in, those leaflets are pushed to the side. And again, in the Edwards TMVR, uh, Edwards Mac, and, and, and for ring with an open cage design, then now you can get flow through the cage and not actually have leaflet obstruction. So uh, this was done in animals at the NIH. That's what the anterior leaflet looks like after a successful lampoon. That's an MRI image before sacrifice, um, CT image before sacrifice. And pressures dropped in the animals, but they didn't have MR to start. So um, there was a little drop in pressure, but stabilization. And so then we moved to humans, and, um, and this has now been done in about 20 patients, and this is an example of burning through the leaflet. And then on the right side, you'll see the two catheters being pulled, and that's the laceration of the leaflet. And then we have the valve ready for immediate deployment, although it has been tolerated in all these patients. Here was our, uh, our third case. Uh, back um, uh, over a year ago now, and you can see that when that valve and ring is in, it does span that full septum. Uh, we added extra and flared it like Myra taught me to do. And if you look on CT scan, it touches the septum, so uh, this patient would have had LVOT obstruction. Uh, we did do a live case for TCT last year, and the only reason I show a SNID better is I want you to look at the hemodynamics here. It's a little bit of hypotension, and then when we pull, the blood pressure actually goes up. And the reason is while you're tenting that leaflet, you have a little bit more MR and the pressure's down, but actually nobody's had hemodynamic consequences during the actual pull. And then, of course, here we are live uh, deploying the case, deploying the valve. And I'll show you after valve deployment here, if you look over here, what you'll see is the end of the transcatheter valve and leaflet are right here touching the septum. And you will see some turbulent flow clearly going through the cage. This live case is posted at, on YouTube. If you want to watch the whole 10 minutes of it, just type in TCT Live 2016 to Lampoon and, and you can find it. 
Uh, we did publish the first five. We started with full rings. We went to bands, and then we did go to Mac, and the first five got published. And, and um, uh, so when I think about all the strategies, Myra's talked in depth about a few of them. Transatrial resection is clearly one part of the citral trial. You can directly resect the leaflet. You can add stable uh, stabilization sutures, a felt pad, as Gaurav had mentioned. Um, but it's a thoracotomy um, and a bypass. Alcohol septal ablation is the simplest of all of them, and I like that, and we do that also. But I'm just not sure about the predicted neo-LVOTs of zero, if it's going to work. Uh, and obviously, there's some delay. You have to wait to four to six weeks. Lampoon is technically more challenging. And its downside is you can't, you only got one shot, because if you have to put a valve in valve, well, now you're propping back open the leaflet of the new valve that you just put in, so unless you want to split it again. Um, uh, but I think it can handle. We've had cases of predicted neo-LVOT of zero uh, that have done fine. Uh, and so the next steps for Lampoon is there is an ongoing 30-patient IDE study. There are three patients enrolled. There are a few more on the docket to go, and hopefully we'll have some, uh, some outcomes. And then um, just to let you know, Lampoon is not just for the mitral uh, leaflet anymore. Um, Paul asked me to show this in a procedure inspired by uh, Danny and first performed by Danny a few weeks ago. You can look at the same problem on the aortic for valve and valve, which is the risk of coronary obstruction uh, in a combined project with the University of Washington now, and then, of course, the usual suspects, Rob and Joffre at the NIH and uh, Vasilis and me at Henry Ford. We, they, they redesigned a lampoon for the aortic valve, and here you can see a mitra flow with an only an 11 millimeter height. It's a 13 millimeter leaflet, so this clearly would be high risk of obstruction because of only a less than two millimeter a sinus. And uh, you can burn through the base of that leaflet just like you would for lampoon. You can snare it, make the loop. And then again, you can just pull electrifying the wire. So now you'll create more aortic insufficiency and now you can put the valve in and here's a picture of, of the case with the leaflet split. So lampoon, not just for the mitral anymore. And uh, here's benchtop testing and what it looked like, courtesy of Jaffer. Again, all done in, in pigs before we moved to animals. And so in summary, we, lampoon is a technique that can address a pretty key shortcoming of TMVR, at least in the current era. There are some advantages over alcohol septal ablation for those unique situations. Maybe you don't have a septal, maybe, maybe you can't wait, maybe the neo-LVOT, the predicted new LVT is just simply too small, and uh, multicenter tri trials are underway. Basilica may address maybe a less common, but certainly shortcoming of valve and valve, and who knows, maybe it'll work for natives. Uh, Transcatheter electrosurgery is a thing now, so learn to burn. And thank you, this is the first uh, Lampoon team in Emory before Vasilis did it. Thanks a lot. Great, thank you. Adam? Just uh, two quick questions I have. One is, is there any concern that as you're pulling, uh, lamp, uh, using the Lampoon uh, procedure, when you're pulling on uh, the, the hot wire, so to speak, that you might actually also injure the aortic valve if you, if you don't right. so turn, the, turn the cautery off quick enough? You know, early on, uh, we've certainly gotten a, uh, actually, you know, so we Early on, we were pulling a little bit harder, and uh, I think there is that issue. You're really only burning for a second or two, and as long as the person's off the button, um, by the time you come around to the aortic, I don't think that's an issue. There was one person actually out of, I think, the 10 I've done, their AI does look a little bit worse, but I don't know if that's catheter-related, for instance. You know, you make an AV loop and things like that. So I, I think with current technique and understanding of it, um, and not actually pulling as quick because you're not as nervous. I actually think you can avoid that. So. And second question is, do you think this technique can be combined with the various TMVR options that are coming to potentially uh, mitigate the neo-LVOT risk? Right. So I think that if it's an open cage design, then it would still work. We have some experience with the tendine valve. There's a lot of cloth there, so I'm yeah. not sure that it would help that. If you're worried about SAM still from the leaflet because of, you know, flow and dynamic changes in that. Then I think, so if there were long anterior leaflet issues, I think you could still do it. The LVOT obstruction one, unless there's an open cage design, though, I'm not sure that, that it's going to have the same effect. So. Well, I, I'm sorry, a comment. I meant to uh, say at the beginning, you know, all the great things that you have done, and I was going to make a comment that when we worked together at Henry Ford, like sometimes I would think that Adam was kind of crazy with all these things. 
the trans cable. Crazy is good. But the train, that when he when he did the trans cable, then I, I learned, you know, there's nothing crazy enough. <laughs> so then they started doing the lampoon, and now we just see the basilica. So it goes back to that nothing is is too crazy. But uh, really, well, congratulations for for well, being thanks. the cowboy well, was, pushing all this. Take that as a compliment. Well, okay, well, I appreciate it. <laughs> Um, but that was uh, <laughs> Danny's idea, actually, and he did the first two in in, uh, in, in Seattle, and then I just followed up with it. And uh, I just say, keep an open mind about everything. I mean, if you if you're a, a doubter, then there'll be less innovation. Yeah. So, thanks.